Hallelujah. This is Easter. So I have to do the second thing before I do the third thing, isn't it? So the second thing is open with me the word of the Lord. Revelation 5 verse 1 to 4. And I'm asking, the question we are asking is, what do you see? What do you see? And I saw in the right hand of him who sat on the throne a scroll written inside and on the back sealed with the seven seals. Then I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, who is worthy to open the scroll and to lose its seal? And no one in heaven or on the earth or under the earth was able to open the scroll or to look at it. Verse number four. So I wept much because no one was found worthy to open and read the scroll or to look at it. Our heavenly father, this morning we are asking ourselves, what do we see? Lord God, this is Easter Sunday. You are alive and well. But the question we are asking ourselves this morning is what do we see? Lord God, I pray that you are going to open our eyes and the eyes of understanding. That dear Father, we have a revelation from your word today. And our life will never be the same again. Thank you for Easter and the victory that we have found because of Christ dying on Calvary. Minister to us, Lord God, in a language we can understand. For this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. John is watching. He is not in a trance, but he's watching. He's watching the end time unfolding before his eyes. He's in one place in Revelation. And in that revelation, and the book of Revelation, if you like, in one place, he mentions the word, I saw, that is six times in that four verses. I saw. And that's why I'm asking ourselves, what do we see? And at this point, he is overcome with anxiety. And this, he, he also has desperation because he doesn't know how things will end. He doesn't know what will happen. And from John's limited perspective, it is seen that destiny is hanging in the balance. It is not so clear what will happen because no one worthy to open the seal of this crawl of judgment which will vindicate the redeemed of all angels was able to open it. There is no one in heaven, the dominion of God. No one on earth, the dominion of man. And no one under the earth, the dominion of Satan. This man of God who had trusted God, this man of God who had gone through persecution, countless Roman empires arrest, religious leaders that talk ill about him, Satan himself who had tortured him and he reduced this man of God to tears because he was not so sure what the outcome would be. He was so uncertain. And the Bible says, John says, I wept much to sob and to wail aloud. He, yeah, thank you that. That's great. <laughs> He wept. He sobbed. Did I say aroud? <laughs> thank you. Thank you. You know where I come from. The things of God, my brother, my sister, are often far different from the way they appear to us with our earthly perspective. I say the, the, again. The things of God are often far different from the way they appear to us with our earthly perspective. Because at that point when this man of God is, is weeping and sobbing, one of the worshipping elders, the Bible says, steps over to John and says, do not weep. Why? Because he said, behold the lion. Remember John looks and says, I see a lamb. Are you seeing it? 
the perspective of this servant of the Lord is that what he is seeing is a lamb, but there is someone who is worshipping. Revelation 5, verse 5 and 6, the Bible says, And one of the, uh, the elders said to me, Do not weep, behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has prevailed to open the scroll and to loose the seven seals. And I looked and behold, in the midst of the throne and of the four living creatures and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb as though it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent out into all the earth. One perspective of this elder, he sees the lion. But when John looks, he sees a slain lamb. Slain. And I want to say this. The problem isn't John's eyesight. It is not the problem of eyesight. No, 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 no. It is his perspective. And I think one of the bigger, biggest challenge of all of us, sometimes it is not our eyesight. It is our perspective. Look at your neighbor, tell them, neighbor, sometimes it's not your eyesight. It is your perspective. So John had no problem with his eyesight, but his perspective, because what he sees is correct. What he sees is correct. But what he understands is incorrect. What he sees is correct. But his understanding of what he sees is incorrect. The one that was crying and wailing and sobbing had his eyes on the problem. So when he opens his eyes to see, he doesn't see anything. He sees his problem and what is on the throne cannot solve his problem. While the one who is worshipping had his eyes on the solution and therefore whatever he saw on the throne, he saw a lion. He saw victory. He saw the power of God. Bless the name of the Lord. What are you seeing? Have you ever felt hopeless? Trapped or helpless? That is simply because you haven't seen the end of the story. Because I think when you see the end of the story, you know, you know, today we are thinking about Garissa. Garissa is the one that is in our, in, our, in our mind and we send our condolences to those that have lost their dear ones. But I also know this. They started killing the Christian Union members who had gone very early for morning glory. Now don't be fooled. That blood will be avenged. You know, sometimes we, we might not see it. But I would like us to see the victory. Because you see, my brother coming to Kenya when he was 19 and goes to Ukunda, which is Kenya, it's because he is seeing things that the people in that place don't see. He is seeing what all of us believe, that Kenya is in the agenda of God. It is not just a gateway but we are going to spread the gospel. And the devil knows it. That blood of those Christians that were not even asked because they were praying, they were all prayed, that blood will be avenged. But that is where we are. As we mourn, when we look actually, we don't see the solution because we don't see the end. But we need to see the end, the victory that the Lord can give this country. I've always, brothers, let's keep on praying. I know we pray for a week, we pray for two weeks. I told you we pray uh, every Monday until something happens. Some of you came a couple of Mondays and now you don't. I ask you to group yourself into a group of seven so that we can have covenant and pray. Some of you did for a little while, then you forgot. I said, let us pray until something happens. You know, sometimes when we, we hear something like this, we might wake up 
And immediately we want to talk about the disciples. We want to look down on them. We want to say they, had, they were not believing. We want to belittle them. Their lack of vision. Maybe they didn't have vision. We want to say so. And so many, so many, so many things. We want to say why, why are not seeing the miracle on that first Easter morning? But remember that you listening to me, none of you went through the agony of Gethsemane. None of you. None of you. Not me, not you. You weren't there on Friday when Jesus died. They didn't have an inspiring drama like the one we see. They didn't. It was real, real life. There was no concert. There was no beautiful sunrise to attend. They had never been on an Easter Sunday. Only a Friday that was far, far from good. The Friday was terrible. And they had never been on a, on a good Sunday. They had never been on an Easter Sunday. But it's good for us to know that they had been with him. At the Last Supper, as he spoke mysteriously to them, he said, one of you, he said, one of you would betray me. One of you. And he struck fear. The Lord struck fear among them into their hearts and they started asking, is it I? Is it I? They have been with him in the garden, remember? And as he prayed in agony for so long that they finally fell asleep for exhaustion, they were with him. They were there when Judas came to betray him. They saw him. And they realized the horror of what his earlier words really meant. They tried to defend him. In actual fact, one of them took a sword and cut the, 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 the high priest's uh, uh, servant. And I think at that point, I think some of them who were really ready for war, when he said, don't you think I can call a, a region, 12 regions of angels, I can call them. I think some of them said, now that is the better part. Let them come and fight for us. But he told them, I can, but he didn't. Because he had said, not my will, but your will be done. They were there. They, they had been with him. They had seen him. They felt the burst of hope when Jesus had just alluded that he's going to call and pray his father to give him 12 regions of angels. But inside despair came upon them when he continued How can the scriptures then be fulfilled? They had followed Jesus at a distance. We know that. Peter got closer. But even outside the gates, as he was put through the mockery of six trials, between night and morning, They had with everyone else the fabricated evidence and outright lies against him. And their heart sank and the resounding verdict of guilty that echoed from every trial. The first trial was before Annas the high priest in John 18, 13. The verdict, guilty. From there he was taken to Caiaphas, Matthew 26, 57. The verdict, Guilty. He was taken to the Sanhedrin, the verdict, guilty. He was taken before Pilate for the first time, Matthew 27, 2, and the verdict, guilty. Then he was taken before Herod, Luke 23, verse 7, the verdict, guilty. Then he was taken back to Pilate, the verdict, guilty, Luke 23, verse 11 to 25. So they had seen Jesus scorched until he could no longer stand under his own power. His skin was literally ripped off in huge gaping patches while over his body. They had seen the makeshift crown that was placed on his head, pressed into his cup until his face, the Bible says, Isaiah says, was dripping with blood and people could not even recognize him. They had seen him slapped. They had seen him punched. They had seen him mad. 
But they had hoped beyond hope that when Jesus was taken before the crowds, that his nightmare would finally be over. They thought. They thought if they took Jesus on where the crowd are, the crowd would say, he healed me. They would say, oh, he ministered to me. But the crowd were charged. They said, crucified him, and they shouted more, crucified him. Even those that were healed by him could not defend him. We are talking about these disciples of Jesus, the apostles. They had watched the angry mob as they shouted that they needed the thief to be released, the murderer, but Jesus Christ to be crucified. The death on the cross was to suffocate him. What do you see? They had heard the last cry. It is finished. But instead of saying it is finished, they heard he is finished. They heard, I am finished. But Jesus said, it is finished. I think the question is again, what do you hear? What do you see? And then what do you hear? Jesus said it is finished and they heard I am finished. So that's, I want you to see John from that perspective. That's why he's sobbing. That's why he's crying. That's why he cannot see the lion, but he sees the lamb. They were there when the Roman soldier pierced Jesus. They were there. They were there when his body was unfastened from the cross and laid on the cold ground. To be wrapped for burial. They were there. They were weeping. They were mourning. Grieving. The procession of grieving was there. A huge stone was rolled. To make sure that where they placed him. Was going to be permanent. In actual fact. It is like they reached to a place. That life no longer existed. I want to ask again, have you ever felt hopeless? Have you ever felt overwhelmed? Have you ever felt trapped and helpless? But that is because you have not seen the end of the story. If, if you are watching a game today and you are watching the game between Arsenal and Liverpool, will you be excited? No. You know why? Because it was 4-1. You know the results. So, you are not excited, are you? Especially if you are a fan of Liverpool. Because you know too much. Have you ever watched a movie with someone who had watched it before? Yes. They keep on telling you, Atam shoot pale, Atam shoot pale. The whole thing is not exciting. Because what? Those guys know the end. So they are just saying, The end, the end, the end. Arsenal will have beaten you 4 1. So. But for us as Christians, if you want your life to be exciting, please. That, and it is, this one is allowed by faith. Go to the conclusion of the whole matter. Ecclesiastic talks about the conclusion of the whole matter. Because the end of everything, this is vanity, that is vanity, that is vanity. But the conclusion, the whole duty of man is to love God, is to serve him. What a conclusion. Why do we get, do we feel helpless and hopeless? Is because... We have no idea what will happen. It is like this story of this old woman that used to pray to the Lord for a supply, supply of food. She was a widow and the neighbor was an atheist. And I know you have heard that story. So one day she is praying in her house and asking the Lord of glory to provide food. God, give me food today. 
you know, praying, our Father who art in heaven, our Lord be thy name. And she was shouting. So the neighbor heard. And the neighbor used to tell her there is no God. So the neighbor went and bought some food and brought to her door and rang the bell and hid in a bush. So when the lady came and saw food, she knelt down, lifted her voice, and thanked God. And then the neighbor came out. He said, I'm the one who bought it for you. She thought the lady will praise him. No, the lady went back to God and said, Lord, thank you that you can use an atheist like this one to provide food for me. Because she has the end. You know who does it. So you are not intimidated. You go on praising him. You will feel hopeless and helpless if you don't know the end. If you haven't seen the end of the story, heaven's script of ages is called the mystery of God, Revelation 10, 7. And because Satan cannot understand it, he is also powerless to change it. And he wants to convince you that God has left you just as much as when darkness comes, he wants to tell you there will not be a, day, a light coming in the day. Don't allow the devil to fool you because every night, you should know there will be a morning. Amen. And you should be so glad that morning is coming. Because that's, what, that's why the psalmist says there are some things that might happen in the night, but joy comes in the morning. That is a person who is waiting for the joy in the morning. Hallelujah. But God has given us the key, and this is very important. And the key is called worship that changes us our perspective so that we can see and live on the heavenly things. Bless the name of the Lord. And you know, Satan cannot even begin to understand it because he lost the, his keys a long time ago. He lost all the access to the purposes of God the moment he rebelled. And he has been frankly trying to buff his way to victory ever since. He's trying to. 1 Corinthians 2, 7 and 10. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory, which none of the princes of this world knew. For had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, I has not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for him that love him. But God has revealed them unto us by his Spirit. For the spirit searches all things. Yes, the deep things of God. Bless the name of the Lord. Worship is key that lifts you up to God's perspective. The higher you rise in worship, the smaller the devil and his kingdom look. The higher you rise. When you see things from heaven perspective, the one opening the scroll which controls the gate is not just a slain lamb, but a strong lion. Once John understands this, or understood this, he could stop weeping. Jesus was not just the lamb slain in Revelation 5, or the lamb slain at Calvary. He was the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. Revelation 13.8. His temporary defeat had always been part of God's plan. The ultimate victory. And Satan did not know it. There are many things that the devil does not know. And I thank God. There are many things. But we have an idea. When we worship, the Lord lifts us up. When, when you are lifted up, then you can start commanding the demons around here. The Lord will take you in as you worship him and show you his majesty and splendor, then the things of this world will appear so small, they will not teach us. Bless the name of the Lord. You see, indeed, after Friday, after Calvary, Satan and his demon had only three days to celebrate, only. And uh, they were very short. To celebrate their killings of God's latest prophet. Actually to them, they had killed the latest prophet. 
So they were adding into their list. Because the devil had taken Jesus and he was asking him, if you are the son of man, so he knew he wasn't the son of man. Because he said, if you are the son of man, turn this stone into bread. So he knew, not the son of man. So he was dealing with a prophet. No wonder even Jesus is asking his disciples, who do men say I am? And they had all the language of a prophet and so on. So even the devil himself thought he was killing another prophet. Another prophet. Satan was puzzled. Because God walked into hell. Satan was puzzled and asked God, what are you doing here? You said that since the fall of man, death, hell, and the grave would be my dominion. Who gave you the authority to come in here? He had all the feeling. The devil had all that feeling to ask the Lord. And God replied, don't you know? You gave me the authority. You crucified me on Calvary. Satan screamed. What do you mean? That was just another prophet named Jesus. God said, no, that wasn't just another prophet, that it was me. And at that moment, Satan understood a scripture that he had not understood for centuries. Deuteronomy 6, 4. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. He is our God. James 2, 19. Thou believest that there is one God? You, you do good. You do good because even the devils believe that and they tremble. All Satan did that day. Hallelujah, I like this. All what the devil did that day, and if you forget all what I'm saying, I want you to hear this. All what the devil did that day, he killed the lamb, but he unveiled the lion. Bless the name of the Lord. He wouldn't know. He had been put down to reveal and open. It is like, it is like, what do you see? Oh, I like this. What do you see? David looks at Goliath and everybody sees a Goliath. Eight feet guy. But what does David see? A bear, a lion, and circumcised Philistine. What are you seeing? Are you hearing what I'm saying? What are you seeing? Because what you see will give you victory. If you see the end, it is going to give you victory. What do you see? What do you see? What do you see? What is this thing that scares you? What do you see? The devil. He killed the lamb, but he unveiled the lion. Revelation 1, 17 to 18 says, And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead, and laid his right hand upon me, saying unto me, Fear not, I am the first, and I am the last. I am he that liveth, and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Bless the name of the Lord. Amen. And then he continues saying, and I have the keys of hell and of death. This is John. Remember, we read John 5, and he is confused because he is sobbing. He is not worshiping. He had been told earlier, in Revelation chapter 1, that I am he that was and now I am. I'm the Alpha and Omega. He said, fear not. Fear not. Fear not. Because if Satan does not have even the keys to his own kingdom, if Satan does not even have the keys of his kingdom, how can he lock me up? If the devil does not even have the keys of his kingdom, how come he wants to lock me up? It is like a bird. The snare has been broken and the bird is inside there. And he's saying, I'm still caught up. There is no bird that will sit there. When the snare is broken, every bird takes off. And I pray that you can take off because the snare is broken. If the devil has no key to his own kingdom, how come he's cheating you that he's locking you with a key? He has no key. But Jesus has the absolute power over our physical death and our spiritual death. When he said to the thief on the cross, today thou shalt be with me in paradise. He said, today I'm going to get the key today and I'll open there where the devil thought he had the key. 
I pray that God can help us to understand this. He was speaking of the abode of the dead. It had been under the control of Satan, says the garden of Eden, Job 3, 17 and 19. But Jesus went through death into the grave, but he came out with the keys to both life and death. Hallelujah. Psalm 68 and verse 18, I'm just about to finish because three o'clock is just about to ring. Thou hast ascended on high. Thou hast led captivity, captivity captive. Thou hast received gifts for men. Yes, for the rebellious also that the Lord God might dwell among them. Ephesians 4, 8, Jesus. Wherefore he saith, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. What are you seeing? What are you seeing? Ezekiel 37, verse 13. And you shall know that I am the Lord when I have opened your graves O oh, my people, and brought you out of all your graves. And the Bible records that that day on Easter Sunday, Jerusalem, 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 was an exciting city to be in. Oh, hallelujah. When people marched and they were not talking to anybody, they were changing location, but people saw them. Can you imagine how it would feel like standing there seeing Mr. Francis Mungai passing by? And I said, that was my daddy. Wow. Why? Because death and Hades have been defeated. There are some of our loved ones that have gone before us. But the Lord, our God, has the key. He has the key. Bless the name of the Lord. Therefore, if Satan is powerless in the realm of your death, who is our last enemy in 1 Corinthians 15, then he is powerless also in the realm of my life. Amen? His only power is deception. Stop wailing and crying. Start worshiping the Lord so that you can have a good perspective. What are you seeing? The worshiper said, I see the Lion of Judah. But what was John seeing? And he was right. He saw the Lamb that was slain. What are you seeing? What are you seeing? What are you seeing? Or what are you hearing? It is finished. What are you hearing? Are you hearing he is finished? Or are you hearing it is finished? If it is finished, it is finished. Bless the name of the Lord. Our Heavenly Father the Father of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We want to thank you for Calvary, a place where there was an exchange. Dear Father, a place where our lives, because of Christ, we get a change. And dear Father, because you hold the key, even now I pray that you're going to open to us life. You are going to open to us healing. You are going to open to us provision. You're going to open to our security. You're going to open to us cover, dear Lord. You're going to open to us blessings in the mighty name of Jesus. Maybe, my brother, you've been overwhelmed. My sister, you feel hopeless and helpless. Maybe that's where you are. You're still sobbing and wailing. But I pray that God will give you a spirit of worship so that you can open your eyes and see the the, you see the lion of the tribe of Judah. Maybe you're saying, Bishop, you don't understand where I am. I feel so far from that lamb. I feel so far from the lion of the tribe of Judah. And I want victory this morning. And you're saying, yes, Bishop, pray for me. I feel hopeless. I feel helpless. If your perspective has been wrong, you have not been seeing well. I want to pray for you that God will allow you to see well in the mighty name of Jesus. So if you're there and you're saying, Bishop, please pray for me. I want to pray for you right now. If you stand on your two feet, I will right now in the name of Jesus. You know yourself, the things that are scaring you, the things that are making you feel helpless, the things that are making you feel hopeless. Oh, you know yourself. You know yourself. B. 
Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know he holds my future, and life is one. Father, as we stand in this sanctuary and from this altar, dear Father, we refuse to be helpless. Yes. We refuse to be hopeless yes. because we can see the lion of the tribe of Judah. Yes, you were slain as a lamb, but your purpose was to overcome the devil, and you did. And you became the lion of the tribe of Judah. Father, we pray that you are going to arise. And your enemies and our enemies will be scattered and be overcome in the mighty name of Jesus. Pray, dear Father, that our eyes will be opened. We will not see men as trees, but you are going to see what, dear Father, you have called us to see. We will see the victory that, will, that came because of Calvary. Because, dear Father, you live. Everybody listening to me can face tomorrow with boldness. Because you live, Heavenly Father, those that are seeking provision, they can go rejoicing because you're going to provide for their needs. Because you live, Heavenly Father, those dear Father feel oppressed, they can go knowing that the Savior, our God, is going to lift them up to a rock to stand. Because you live, Lord God, our businesses are going to thrive. Because you leave, Kenya will be secure in the hands of God. Because you leave, our president will receive the wisdom that comes from you. Like the wisdom of Solomon in the mighty name of Jesus. Because you leave, oh God, the schemes of the devil in this country will be flushed out in the mighty name of Jesus. Whether they are in a cave or in a house. We say that mighty God, you will judge them by fire in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord God Almighty, Father, pursue them. Pursue them where they are hiding. And the leader of that scheme, dear Father, bring them to naught in the mighty name of Jesus. We are all affected. All the 47 counties are affected yes. because all the counties had the students there. Yes. Father, therefore, we pray for the governors and senators. We pray for the MCAs in this country. How they handle this situation will give us victory. Lord, we can see victory. Right now we are crying, but we can see victory. Right now we are sorrowful, but we can see victory. Right now we have no understanding, it's not yet revealed, but in the spirit we can see, dear Father, the culmination of the whole thing is that the world will be reached for Jesus. Father, we pray that the Christian world will take advantage of this situation and send men and women courageous and bold enough to win many for the kingdom of God. We want to thank you, Lord, and to give you praise. We see the line. We see the line. We see the line of the tribe of Judah. We see our victory. We see our victory. Would you lift up your hand and worship the Lord for a minute? Would you worship the Lord for a minute? Would you worship Him? Would you join the elders as they worship the Lord? Would you worship the Lord? Would you worship the Lord? Would you lift up your voice and worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords? Lord God, I worship you. I worship you, Father. Because, dear Father, I've known you, whom to know is life eternal. You are greater, Lord, than the devils and demons. You have power than the power of darkness. And darkness does not mean there will be no light. You are going to shed your light in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. 
face tomorrow. You may get seated in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen.